Hey, Sarah, how's it going today? Good, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for participating as a mock interview candidate for this mock interview call based on Amazon's data scientist interview. And in this interview, we're going to cover A-B testing questions. Does that sound good with you? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start with some questions I'm going to ask. And then, um, you know, after you provide the responses, um, you know, I'll probably take about five to 10 minutes, give you some assessment. And then, um, uh, you know, and hopefully the, the tips that I provide in this mock interview call is going to be really helpful for your um, upcoming interviews at FANG companies. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Great. All right. So starting with the first question, what I'd like to ask you, whoops, I just pasted in the wrong spot, is how do you measure the effectiveness of a recommender system? Okay, so before I dive into uh, this question, so uh, I have a few clarify que uh, clarifying questions that I want to ask. Uh, the first question is, uh, so are you talking about the recommend recommender system uh, in Amazon Web specifically? Yes. Okay, sounds good. And uh, in terms of uh, effectiveness, uh, can you uh, tell me a little bit about what you mean by effectiveness? You could perhaps think about it in terms of maybe the quality of the uh, recommendation. Quality of the recommender system. Okay, so maybe uh, how accurate uh, the recommended, uh, recommended system can uh, predict uh, the user's preference when they purchase products in Amazon Web. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a fair assumption? Yep. Okay, sounds good. So essentially is uh, predictive accuracy of the recommender system. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so a few things uh, that I can think of is that, like we just uh, mentioned, uh, the percentage of uh, product, uh, uh, let me see, number of uh, product purchases out of a uh, number of uh, products uh, recommended. Uh, so right now I'm just coming up with a metrics that we can use to uh, measure the effective, uh, effectiveness of a recommender system. And I think uh, the number of pu uh, product purchased out of uh, all the uh, product recommended uh, will be an indicator to tell us how, uh, how uh, how the recommender system can uh, actively predict users' preferences. Because the more product that, that they purchase, uh, the higher this percentage, the more likely that uh, the users are interested in the uh, products that recommender system is recommending. Okay. Um, and then the second metric that I can think of is uh, the time, the amount of time spent that uh, users uh, have spent on uh, purchasing purchasing on the platform. Uh, the reason, uh, so in this case, uh, I would say if uh, the recommender system is doing its job it is likely that uh, the user uh, spend less time on uh, picking the right product, uh, uh, picking the products that they are interested in. Because uh, so when, whenever a user go to Amazon, right, they have a product in mind that they want to purchase. And if re the recommender system is doing its job, then it's likely that they, the time spent in their purchase is low. Uh, and the third one that I can think of is uh, the uh, average revenue, uh, average purchase uh, revenue 
uh, per user. Uh, and I think if uh, this is also a good indicator because revenue is the North Star metrics uh, that Amazon wants to optimize. And if the recommender system is uh, effective, it, it is most like, likely that the average purchase revenue per user is high. So these are the three metrics that I can, uh, I can come up with to measure the effectiveness of a recommender system. Okay, got it. All right. So segue over to this is um, suppose that a new recommender system is proposed. How do you know if this new version should be used? Sounds good. So in order to uh, in order to understand whether we should launch this new version system, the best way that we can do is uh, do an A/B test where the control group uh, uh, will, will uh, have uh, the old other uh, existing recommender system, whereas uh, the treatment group will have the new uh, version of the recommender system. Uh, and then the metrics that we can measure um, is uh, the number of uh, the, like the number of product purchase out of the number of products recommended. So let's say if the um, average number of product purchase out of the number of products recommended per user. Uh, is uh, increasing in the treatment group, then uh, we can conclude that uh, the new version system can be used. So do you have any questions uh, based on uh, the, the, the control groups and treatment groups and the metrics that I have listed so far? If not, then I can go on with uh, the experimental uh, framework that we can use. When you're saying the number of product recommended, um, do you see any potential problem with that as a denominator? The number of product recommended. Uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, so yeah, so the number of product recommended um, based on the search words that the user has entered. Okay, but what if a user has multiple search sessions? Right, uh, so yeah, so I think what you're suggesting is that if they have multiple search sections, uh, what we can do is, uh, what we can do is, oh, good questions. Let me think about this. Uh, if they have uh, multiple sections, then we will only account the first sections uh, that uh, they they enter. Because if we account multiple sections, then it will violate uh, the assumptions of a t-test, where the uh, the observations should be independent and identically distributed. Okay. Um, sorry, and your proposal for making it independent is what again? I'm sorry. Yeah, so my recommendation is we only account for the first sections. Oh, okay, got, the, it. got it. Got it. All right. Um, okay, so per proceed. Okay, so for, in terms of the experimental framework, uh, we can use, uh, so one thing that we need to consider is the uh, alpha. So in this case, I set the alpha equals to 0 0.05. Essentially what alpha is, is uh, the, the type one error rate. Uh, it is the risk that the company is willing to, uh, to take in order to detect an effect in this experiment. So I'm using 0 0.05 in this case because uh, I felt like uh, it, it is a good alpha that we can use to uh, to do the experiment. It, but if the if Amazon believes that uh, 
the risk is too high, they are uh, they can lower the alpha to zero point zero one. And the power that we can set in this case is uh, zero point eight. So it is the probability of detecting an effect if uh, there is truly an effect exist. Uh, and the minimum detectable effect that we can use in this case is one percent. So, um, so because uh, Amazon has a, such huge uh, user base, with uh, uh, with a one percent increase will be uh, significant uh, for us to launch this uh, uh, new version of uh, recommender system. Okay. What else? Okay. So with the alpha power and minimal detectable effect, uh, we can uh, estimate uh, the sample size uh, that we can use uh, for this experiment. So, uh, and with the sample size in mind, then uh, we can uh, set out our test, which in this case, I will use uh, a t-test and um, with uh, so with the t test, then we will need to estimate the experimentation time, which uh, I propose to one to two weeks. And so let's say we launch this test, and then the result that we get is uh, p value. Uh, the p value is less than or equal to alpha. Uh, then we will reject the null hypothesis. Uh, reject the null hypothesis and conclude that uh, the new version of recommend the system uh, has uh, significantly increased uh, the average number of product purchase out of the number of products recommended per user. Okay. All right. Um, so I have some like two follow-up questions for you. So the first follow-up question I have for you is um, how do you know what your uh, statistical power should be? So, um, so you set it at eighty um, percent, but are there any instances where you might want to increase the power? Yeah. So let's say uh, we uh, run this test with uh, eighty percent power, and then the test result is insignificant, which is p value is greater than alpha. But uh, our PM insists that oh, there. Uh, there should be an effect uh, with this new version of recommended system, then what we can do is to increase the power to maybe 90%, uh, which like if we increase uh, the power, it will require more sample size and longer experimentation time, but uh, increasing the power will give us a high probability of detecting an effect if the effects truly exist. And what is that effect you're talking about? Oh, the effects that uh, I'm talking about is uh, the difference between uh, the metrics. So essentially, it is the effect size. Okay. What if what if the effect is negative? Uh, if so, let's say if we uh, run this experimentation and the effect is negative. Uh, something that we can do is first we need to check uh, whether our experimentation setup is correct and then secondly we can check uh, some internal and external factors for example in terms of internal factors uh, we can check whether there are bugs in the new rec new versions of the recommender system and uh, for the external factors we want to make sure that uh, our competitors is not launching some uh, events that can influence uh, the result in uh, this experiment, this experiment result, or there is no holiday effect that might potentially uh, affect uh, the result as well. Okay, got it. Um, and the another question I have for you is. Um, what do you think would happen if you were to run the experiment less than one week? So if it is if we run it less than one week, it is very likely that 
uh, we might get a significant result, but this is not true because at the beginning when we have a low sample size, it is very likely that our metric is fluctuating uh, in between the significant area and the insignificant area. So it is very important to uh, make sure that we uh, launch the experiment for uh, for a, a certain number of days given uh, our sample size that is calculated that is calculated using alpha power and minimal detectable effect. Got it. Okay, just taking notes here. Okay. Okay. All right. So that is the um, end of the question portion. Now let's actually dive into the feedback. But before I start, um, I just want to mention that in terms of the um, the feedback portion of this, this is actually going to be available as part of the mock interview video recording in the um, in the monthly subscription course. So for those who are preparing for A/B testing interviews in general, I would definitely recommend that you check out the dataintv.com. Uh, check out the courses and the coaching services that will give you some of the access to these mock interview videos. 